Well, good, well, good morning. morning. Ooh, Ooh, loud. Loud. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome, and welcome to, to our, our home away, away from, from home. home. Uh, uh, we're Monday, Monday morning, morning they will be starting on the carpeting, carpeting the new, new flooring in the, in the sanctuary. sanctuary. So, so right, right now, now all the pews, pews are off half, half the side and they're, and they're crammed, crammed in between the other, the other half of the pews so there's no place to sit over there. Plus, Plus there's, if you walk around, around there's a lot of little studs sticking, sticking up, up with the pews where you trip over and fall over them that would not be a good thing. So we're in here for a couple Sundays. To those, to those who are tuning, tuning in online, online I, know I know it probably sounds a little echoey because, because everything, everything in this building is hard, hard surface, surface, so it echoes a little, little bit. bit. But, but I, think I think you'll, you'll be able to worship, worship with us, and thank, thank you for tuning in on this rainy Sunday, Sunday morning. morning. Our prayer, Our prayer focus, focus this week is, is uh, students, students back, back in school, school. it's middle, middle of January, January. The students, students are all back in school, not only here, but in the colleges, so keep them in your prayers as they continue to learn. If you could sign the attendance pads and pass them down, that would be great, thank you for doing that. We will, we will be praying, praying tomorrow, tomorrow morning at 8.30, 830 but we'll, we'll be meeting, meeting here instead, instead of the sanctuary because they're, they're going to start working in there uh, in the morning. morning. So, so we'll, we'll be praying, praying here in the morning. In the morning. So, so if you want to come, come by at 8.30, 30, you can come, come join, join us for prayer. prayer. We'll, be we'll be doing, doing the marriage covenant, covenant renewal, renewal during, during the service on February 13th. Um, this, this is for anybody, anybody that wants to participate, participate. If, you if you have an anniversary of 5, 5 10, 10, 15, 20, 20 any of the five year, year intervals, intervals, or anybody, anybody who's got, got a 50, 50 or more, 50, 50 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 60, 63, anything, anything like, like that, that. And, you and you want to participate, participate we'll, do we'll do that on February, February 13th, 13th. So, so please, please call Kyle in the office, office to sign up because we need to know how many are going to participate, plus we need pictures of what you look like when you got married and what you look like today. See how marriage has fared with you. Uh, the, the satellite, satellite high, school high school football, football banquet, banquet was last um, Sunday, Sunday evening. evening. And one, and one of the things they started giving, giving out last year was, was the War and Green, Green Service Award. Award. And this, and this is, is going, going to the football, football player, player who, who exemplifies that, that attitude Warren, Warren had of giving, giving of himself, of serving, serving others, others, and, and pushing, pushing it out. And, and the, the one, one who won it this year was our own Akaya Jones, who plays on the football team. So that was wonderful. Uh, there's, uh, there's a group, a group that, that is trying, trying to get, to get a, an amendment on the ballot, ballot uh, uh, Sanctity of Life, life a, heartbeat, a Heartbeat, um, Law, and they, and they need 82,000 signatures to get, to get on the amendment. amendment. And, and if you would like, like to sign, sign one of those, those that's, that's what's what's something that's concerned you. There, there are some, some uh, documents, documents back there, and we, we will make sure they get nailed in if you want to do that. And so with that, then, let us prepare our hearts and minds for the worship of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you. 
Amen. Amen. This time, time let us stand, stand for a call, call to worship. worship. The love of God extends to the heavens. How precious is God's that steadfast love. For all the eternity he shall God's grace. And now let's remain standing, standing and, sing and sing our first hymn together. together. To God, God be the, the glory. glory. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We will believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy and apostolic church. We acknowledge baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. You may, you may be seated. seated. We come we down out of that time, time where we lift up our, our prayer request, request and our praises. praises. One, of, One the of the praises we had, we had is the 9 o'clock service. Uh, Christopher Powers, Powers and Bailey and Carissa, Carissa were there, there to lead, lead us this morning, morning as they are now back. So continue to pray for Bailey that she's got a couple more tests to go and that those tests come back 100% clean of all the leukemia. So keep her in your prayers in that regard. Other praises this morning. Nothing good's going on in anybody's life again. Everything worked. <laughs> Everything worked. <laughs> it was a praise that Rick and uh, Sean, Friday, they came over here and spent a pretty good part of the day, I think, getting everything set up for getting what we needed from the sanctuary over to here so that we could worship today and that we could get it out onto uh, Facebook so that people tuning in could at least still come in. Yes. Yes, that's a praise, but we can get out on Facebook to catch so many people still not comfortable with coming. Yes? Our daughter and grandson are with us today. Oh, we're glad to have you back again. <laughs> yes? They got to have breakfast together this morning. That was, that was the big thing. Well, let us go to the Lord in prayer. A God of grace and peace, God of joy, God of love, God who blesses so much, we want to thank you for all the blessings you give us. We thank you for the gifts you give us. We thank for you for the purpose you give us, the love you give us. Everything you give us, you bless us with, Lord. And we come here this morning to sing your praises and to thank you that you are our God. To share our love back to you. To ask you to fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we might leave this place renewed, refreshed, 
and with purpose to help bring about your kingdom of God on earth. And so, Lord, we thank you for all the blessings. And as we come here this morning, Lord, we lift up those in our schools. Lord, it's the middle of January. Many of our students are back in class here at their preschool and elementary school or middle school, high school and colleges. So, Lord, bless all these students as they return, as they go through this spring semester and learn. Help them to grow and to become the young men and women you've created them to be. Help them to learn. Help them to discover the talents they have that you gave them at their birth so that they might know that they are loved, that they have purpose, and that they've been given resources for that purpose. So bless them, Lord. And Lord, as we come this morning also praising your name, we thank you for healing. We thank you for the healing that you've taken Bailey through to this point, and we ask for a complete healing, that nothing comes back in her body, Lord. So bless her as she goes through these few more tests in the coming months. So bless her and heal her. And Lord, we lift up all of those on our prayer list. We lift them up, Lord, because you are the one who can heal. You are the one who can restore. You are the one who brings peace. You know their needs better than we, Lord, so bless them. Heal them. And Lord, now we lift up to you that one name, that one request that is silent in our heart that we name before you now. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this church. We thank you for the outreach of this church, the opportunities you've given us to make a difference in people's lives. And Lord, we thank you over this last two years as we have dealt with this pandemic that we have reached out in so many ways, that we have touched so many lives, that we have come up with new ways of doing, being, and reaching out. We thank you for your leading, your guidance, your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we want to be your church. So continue to open our eyes and ears to the ministry you call us to. Continue to show us where we can make a difference in people's lives. Because, Lord, we know that there are people hurting out there. There are people lonely. And we want to touch them and reach them for you. So, Lord, help us to be that kind of church, that kind of people. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit, the gift of Jesus Christ, that empowers us to be able to go and to do. So, Lord, bless all those who give of their time and their talents. And we thank you for the precious gift of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray the prayer we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, <clears throat> thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Yes. Oh, Dale Myers is over at home, reasonable. Yes. So I didn't know that. And the other thing I forgot to mention is uh, Richard Rogers passed away this week. I don't know if you had heard that. Um, he lived a good long life, and he was struggling with many things for the last few months. He was falling down a lot, so it's there's not going to be a service right now because of COVID. The family's just going to do a graveside with the family. We may do something later when conditions more warrant gathering for people who we don't know. So just to let you know that, and we don't have any kids today because it's raining. So. <laughs>
And our special music for today will be Nothing But The Blood. Um, Amanda and I are doing it as a duet. We were going to have Elaine Anthony singing a solo, but obviously she needs to be with her husband right now. So we'll cover it today. Crushing every enemy 
Yeah, we are truly blessed by Misha and Amanda for the last four months. <laughs> While Christy did be away, they had to come in early, double up on Wednesday night, and stress out a little bit. <laughs> but they're young. They can handle it. <laughs> but we are blessed to have you, and thank you for filling in while they were dealing with the situation that needed their utmost attention. We did compensate them for it a little bit, but... <laughs> But it was their time, which is even more important, and so thank you. And as we come now to the, we present our tithes and offerings. Actually, we, you know, we're not passing the plate. We got the baskets back there still. Um, the earlier in the year, I can say that now, it's the third week, it's January. <laughs> I said I'd get with Shirley, and we'd figure out how much money did we give away in extra giving in 2021. And Shirley ran the report this last week. And both she and I were kind of shocked. We, we had a number in mind, but not that number. Just the dollars alone above what y'all gave to the budget, we gave 60, over 61000 to different causes during the year, the tornadoes, the hurricanes, the children's home. But that 61000 doesn't include the gift cards y'all bought for the children's home, all the gifts you bought for the giving tree, the Thanksgiving baskets that we put together. When you add all those up together, we're probably somewhere around sixty-five to 70000 And then when you add the money we put in the budget, because we give to missions and different things across the world and to other things that we plan to give, we were probably somewhere around $75,000 that we gave away last year directly to people to touch their lives. And so that blew Shirley and I away. We thought it was maybe forty or 50000 not $75,000. So thank you all so much for your generosity in touching the lives of the people, not only in this county, but in places across the country and the world. It's just like I say, thank you so much for giving of yourselves. So as we now come to that time where we present our tithes and offerings, let us go to the Lord in prayer. O oh God of grace and peace, we thank you that you're a good God, that you bless us that you give us purpose and you call us to give of ourselves to touch other people's lives. And when we give of ourselves, you bless us. And we thank you that you have blessed this church beyond measure, that we have been able to do so much for so many with so few people coming over this last year, even though we know we had many more tuning in online and giving that way. We thank you for all the blessings you gave this church, Lord. We thank, I thank you for all the people who contributed, who gave it themselves and their time and their money to make all of this happen. So Lord, as we enter this new year of 2022, guide us to the things you would have us to do. Bless us once again so that we might be a blessing to others. And Lord, now as we present these are tithes and offerings, multiply them for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Oh, 
Yep, we put the thing on wheels so we can move all over the place. When I first started preaching, I loved having a pulpit like this because when I got behind it, no one could see my knees shaking. <laughs> when I got here today, y'all had that skinny thing. There was no place to hide over in the other one. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from 1 Corinthians, beginning of the 12th, the 12th chapter, verse first. Hear now these words. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, and to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to one and to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another the various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Have you ever noticed at times you're not quite satisfied with what you have? You look at other people's stuff and you go, why can't I have that? You no longer see the blessings that you have. There's a humorous story that appeared in the Stan Fur magazine a few years back. It's about a mother and son and they were out one day and a tornado all of a sudden surprised them. And the mother was clinging to a tree and at the same time trying to hold on to her son. But the swirling winds were too much and carried him away into the sky. He was gone in a flash. And the woman began to weep and pray to God, saying, Please, O oh Lord, bring back my boy. He's all I have. I'll do, every, I'll do anything not to lose him. If you'll bring him back, I'll serve you all my days. And as soon as she finished saying that, suddenly the boy fell from the sky at her feet. His hair was a bit mussed up and he was a bit dusty, but safe and sound. And his mother was just joyful and she's brushing him off. And then all of a sudden she stops, holds him back a minute, looks up to heaven and says, He had a hat, Lord. <laughs> As I said, sometimes we're not satisfied with the goodness we get. We look around and we see the things others have and we seem to forget about what we have. We think that what they have is better than what we have. And I don't know why we do that, but we get into that comparison all the time. And in Paul's letter to the Corinthians, he's dealing with a church that has a lot of people that are looking around and they're trying to say, who is the best? What gifts are the best? What service is the best? I'm better, you're worse, so get in line. You know, we do that oftentimes. And like many churches, the church in Corinth was a curious mix of people. It's not like this town. This town has a lot of people who grew up in it. But everywhere else I've been in Florida, most of the people were not born there. They moved there. That's kind of what Corinth was like. It was a metropolitan area that everyone came there to live and to work. And so you have this mixture of people. And the church there at Corinth was, had demonstrated that same mixture. Some were owners of slaves and some were slaves. There were wealthy people and then there were day laborers who worried about working each day to eat. There were merchants and artisans. There were busy households and single people. There were older people honoring the old traditions and young people wanting something new. And even when they worshipped, they couldn't all get there at the same time. And so when they shared a meal, the meal was over before some could get there, and there were problems with that. And there are times I'm thankful for the messy church at Corinth, for that the fact that they got so much wrong, because if they had gotten everything right, Paul wouldn't have written this letter. And we wouldn't have his thoughts on how a church should look and operate, so we should be thankful for the messiness of that church. Well, our scripture lesson today is one of the cases where the people are arguing about 
what is the greatest gift and what's a lesser gift and this one's more important and that one's not as important. And in talking about the gifts of the Spirit, Paul mentions that they're given by God. And notice at the beginning, he connects the Trinity. He says that all things are given from God, the Father, then the Son, and then the Holy Spirit. He says the, it's important that gifts are given by the one Spirit, not the gifts that are given. And this is why Paul kind of will always go back to look at the human body. And he'll compare all the gifts to like a human body. And which body part is the most important? Well, you find that out when your thumb's hurting, that it all of a sudden becomes the most important, or you stub a toe, and now it's the most important. You fall down, and your hip is hurting, and now it's the most important. In life, it shows you that all the parts are coming together, and that one is not any more important than other. So what we need to understand is that God has given us these gifts, and the first thing we need to do is try to, to figure out what gift we have. See, the, in determining the gift God has given you, you're beginning to see God's purpose for your life. And second, we need to recognize that these gifts are from God. God is the giver of the gifts of the Spirit. Can you imagine at the end of your life, you're standing there before Jesus Christ? He says, what do you think of that gift I gave you? And you'd be like, well, um, uh, I put it on a shelf. <laughs> I didn't really get it off and use it. Can you imagine having to tell Christ, you didn't use the gift he gave you. And then the other thing you need to understand with gifts is you're not perfect at using them from the first time you tried. Like all talents, they have to be developed, they have to be used. I love what a pianist said once. He said, you know, I've got to practice every day. If I don't practice one day, I know the difference. If I don't practice two days, those who hear me know the difference. We have to use our gifts. Everybody looks at Amanda. <laughs> Is that true, Amanda? <laughs> we can fake some things, but... But God's gifts are always enough for each individual to accomplish something. Everybody has something and some purpose. And in the churches I've served, the churches I've been a member at, I've seen there are really only two kinds of people in the church. There are those who have said, I'm not going to use my church because it's not that, my gifts because it's not that important. And there are those who embrace the gifts they got and they use them to the fullest and they make an impact in people's lives. See, we must look at our gifts and say, you know, I may not accomplish as much as someone else. I may not have as much as someone else. But I'm going to give what I have, it's all. And see, when we do that, we make a difference. And we're never going to get anywhere unless all of us use our gifts together. And these gifts are given for the betterment of the community. Look what Paul says in verse 7. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. It isn't given for a selfish reason. It's given so that we collectively can do great things. When I talked about how much money we've given, there was not anybody that gave the $80,000. It was a collectively of us coming together. And when we come together, we touched people's lives and made a difference and amazed people over, the year, over that year. And see what most people, when they look at this verse, most theologians believe that God has given every single church every gift it needs to be successful. The problem is we're not successful when we don't all use our gifts. And we need to remember that for the common good. I remember this story about an elderly woman. She'd always wanted to travel. And so she finally got the opportunity, and she's going to get her passport. And I don't know if you still do this. I know when I first got my one, you had to go to the post office there to send it off and send everything there. And the, the clerk told the woman, you know, before I can process this, you need to take a loyalty oath. So raise your right hand and repeat after me. And the lady did as she told, and the clerk said, Do you swear to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic? Well, at hearing this, she just froze. And then she started to tremble a little bit and turn pale. And then she kind of leaned forward and to the clerk and said, uh, all by myself? <laughs> Sometimes we can get that when we think it's all up to me to know. It's a collective. God gives us the gifts so that not everybody has all of them, so that we need one another, that collectively we go and make a difference. This is why... 
Paul compares it to the human body. See, as members of our body, we're not sure why we got one part over another part, why we didn't even determine the makeup. These are all God's gift to us for a purpose. And the gifts of God should not be wasted. You know, what's the use of having an eye if it doesn't work? Or a hand if it refuses to work? We need all of our potty to work. And today, when I look at most churches, and even we at this church fall into that category every now and then, we're acting like we're a church that had a stroke and half our body is paralyzed because half the church isn't using their gifts. And so the other half is trying to overcome the half that's paralyzed by not using it. See, we suffer when people don't use the gifts. There's a story by Ethel B. Sutton in her book, Today's God Word. In the book, she tells of a young British soldier who was blinded in battle. This was years ago. And he had one talent. He played the piano. He played beautifully. So while he was in the hospital, he would sit at the piano playing to try and encourage the other soldiers there who were recovering. And one day when he finished playing a number, someone was clapping enthusiastically and the soldier being blind couldn't see who it was. And he said, who are you? And he was astonished when the man replied, I am your king. See, the king had come to encourage those who had been wounded for his country. And without realizing it, this young man was encouraging the king and entertaining him. And Paul's reminding us that each of us received a gift, and it may not seem like much compared with others. But we, when we utilize it in serving one another, there is somebody who's watching us use it. You can be sure that Jesus Christ sees us when we use our gifts. You may not win an award. You may not be written up in the pulpit. You may not want to be written up in the pulpit. Because many of the gifts most people don't ever see being used. They're the behind the scenes. There are the front line gifts, the speaking and the preaching and the teaching. But there's so many more gifts about service behind the scenes. And when they're not done, those who are up front can't do as well. And when we do our gifts, when we give what we have, it touches people. Even if it's a little thing. You remember when Jesus was teaching at the temple? And he stepped back and he watched the place where the people came to put their money in the treasury. And he noticed one person that no one else noticed. A woman came and gave her two mites. Didn't look like much to anybody else and nobody really noticed that. But Jesus noticed and said she has given so much because she gave what she had. When you use your gift faithfully, whether it's encouraging, an encouraging word, a pat on the back, visiting the lonely, generous giving of money, making a phone call, providing transportation, praying for others, teaching children, teaching adults, whatever it may be, remember you're playing for the king. What you do is valuable. Even if you think it's not, it's valuable. Someone once made this comparison when we think of the gifts. He said, you know, it looks like some people were given diamonds. And I was given a sack of corn. And when I compare the cost of the sack of corn to the diamond, it doesn't even come close to comparing with the diamond. And if you set that sack of corn down for 100 years and that diamond for 100 years, that sack of corn still wouldn't be worth much. And that diamond would probably be worth more. And if you go by 1,000 years, the same thing. The diamond's even more valuable than the sack of corn, still not worth much. But if you took that sack of corn and planted it in the moist ground and let it grow and harvested it and used it and replowed it into the ground, can imagine how much money over a hundred years that would be worth. How much over a thousand years you kept doing that, what it would be worth. The cost of the diamond wouldn't even come close to the cost of what that corn produced. And that's what our gifts are. If we put them on the shelf, they're not worth much. When we use them, they're worth more than anything imaginable because they're touching people's lives. And this has been a thing that's been down through the centuries, this idea that your gift is needed no matter how small. You remember that little children's poem, that little children's rhyme? For want of a nail, the shoe was lost. For want of a shoe, the horse was lost. For want of a horse, the rider was lost. For want of a rider, the battle was lost. For want of the battle, the kingdom was lost. All for the want of a horseshoe nail. The little things matter. 
That's why Jesus says, when you give a cup of cold water in my name, you proclaim the gospel. It's the little things that make so much difference. And without these little things, the use of your gift, the kingdom suffers. We suffer because of withheld gifts. I love what someone once said about our gifts. He said, your great glory is not to be inferior to what God has made you and gifted you. Yes, God seems to give some people some pretty big gifts and calls them to do some pretty big things. But one thing I noticed in reading the Bible, if God calls you to do big and wonderful things, you have a pretty lousy life. (laughs) When you look at all the people, the prophets, Moses, they were constantly badgered, harassed. And they could only do it through God's strength. Yes, God calls a few people to do those great things, but the rest of us he calls to just touch our neighbor, to be close, to show us that everyone is needed, to listen, to hear what are the fears of our neighbor. See, when we come together and realize that we, none of us has it all, we learn we need each other. We, to, we know we need to learn to listen to one another and find out where the needs are, where the pains are. There's an interview that sometime back featured on onbeing.org and it was with Ruby Sales, a civil rights icon. And she said there's one question we can ask that always works. See, Sales is highlighted in the new Museum of African American History and she founded the nonprofit Spirit House Project in Atlanta. And she grew up in the segregated South where injustice ran deep and there were huge divides with the people. And the first time she went to a civil rights demonstration, she said, you know, we were surrounded by horses and state troopers who wouldn't let us go to the bathroom. I kept looking up at the sky, waiting for the Exodus story to happen to me. I expected God to appear and some chariots to open up in the sky because I couldn't imagine that we were so right and God could be so wrong. She said, but God didn't show up as she imagined. But through that experience, I learned and for others. She says, I learned this one question that always works. Where does it hurt? We each carry different beliefs and live with different struggles. And this question allows us to see one another as we go out and use our gifts together and we touch people's lives. We learn from people and we understand where does it hurt so that we can step up and help with the gifts God has given us. See, people are hurting out there. They're struggling to find any kind of answer. And when we withhold our gifts, we can't reach them to the fullness that God wants us to. And God's purpose suffers. This year, I encourage you to make it a challenge in your life to figure out the gifts God has given me. And ask myself, am I using those gifts? Because as we age, our gifts will change. The gifts you had when you were 20 may not be the spiritual gifts you have when you're 40 and may not be the spiritual gifts you have in your 80s. Because God kind of adapts as we grow older and our bodies no longer can do what we used to do. But God, no matter our age, is giving us something to do. And when we use our gifts, I believe this is where the greatest peace in our lives comes and we can find the greatest joy because that's where we're finding God's purpose. Do not bury your gift Use them and see how God blesses that this year. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for so many blessings. We thank you for your love, your grace, and your peace. And most especially, Lord, we think that we're glad that you think that we have purpose. That no matter how wrong we are at times, how we struggle to do things, you include us in the building of your kingdom. You include us in your purpose. You include us in your work. You include us in your love. We thank you for that. So, Lord, now as we get close to the end of this service, bless us, Lord, with these gifts. Help us to discover them. Help us to know your love through them. And help us to find your joy in them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together for our closing hymn, number 554. All praise to our redeeming Lord.
as we prepare to leave this day, let us reach up and grab God's hand, knowing that he has hold of you. He will walk with you wherever you go. And that as you discover your gifts and use them, he will be there to encourage you and strengthen you. So go and discover that gift. Find the joy in it and bless other people through the use of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.